Hey, Jonathan Sully here, working with Power Automate Desktop this time. What I'd like to do is walk you through a use case that I have actually used quite a few times here in the past few weeks, something working with the clients where we have an Excel list or Excel table, and there's some value, some currency amounts in that list that we just, we need to go and convert that. And we'd like to be able to automate the process of converting those amounts from our standard US dollar here in the US, but go out and convert it to euros or convert it to Canadian dollars or any other currency we may have because we have that big company, that growing company with international trade. But the problem is right now, we have to do all of that manually. Just open up a currency converter, have that done, type it in, extract it, write it back into our Excel sheet, and it just gets annoying. It's just a, a manual process that we don't want to do anymore. Well, luckily for us, we have Power Automate Desktop to, to help us do that, set it up a flow to automatically read from that Excel table, send that into our currency converter, converter and right back in that newly converted currency. So let's take a look at how we can get through that. All right, so here you have my Excel workbook here that I just have a, a very small table here. We have 10 different values. I have ID, the account or company name, and the amount that I want to convert. So what I like to do is set up a flow using Power Automate, in this case, Power Automate Desktop, to read through this table, extract each one of these amounts, and then add in the converted amount right next to it. So what we can do is jump into Power Automate Desktop, start our flow by launching this Excel file, and then go ahead and start getting that converted amount ready to go for us. So now we can come back in here, just push play, and it'll automatically read this table every single time and do the work for us. So here, the first step that we want to do is to automatically launch this Excel file each and every single time. All right, I don't wanna to have to manually open it, I want that to automatically launch for us. So what we'll do here is start off with our actions by going into Excel and choosing Launch Excel. So I'll go ahead and drag that in there and then I'll go find the path of the document because I don't want a blank document, I want a specific document, open the following one. I'll go point to that path, I do have it on my desktop here, so I'll go ahead and use that here. And I do wanna make this instant visible. Make sure it's not read only because we do want to write back into it and then just go ahead and select save. And so now we have the ability to launch this exact Excel file each and every single time that we want to run the flow. The next step for us is to be able to point to the, the actual rows that we want to use. So we want to be able to make sure we're pointing to this specific column and to the, the exact rows that we need. We also need to do is declare our boundaries of the table of the column that we are rows that we're working with. What I wanna make sure is that when I start the flow, I start here at the first one and I end here. I don't want it to keep trying to pull in all of these empty values in those extra rows. With that said, what we need to do as our next step here within our Excel actions is to get first free column or row from Excel. Okay, we can go ahead and drag that in there. And what that produces are two flow variables for us to use. The first is called first free column and the second is first free row, which will identify the boundaries of any of the given values we have there. Anything that's empty, that's the first free column or first free row that we have for that specific table. So we can go ahead and select save there, and there we have our flow variables. We actually have three flow variables now, all working with Excel. The first is the Excel instance that we are launching, so the window, their instance for that. And of course, the other two are first free row and first free column. So now that we have the ability to you know, identify our borders, our boundaries of the given values here, the next thing we wanna do is be able to read from this Excel table. So when we think about that, we want to read not just the whole table as at you know at once, but individual values in here, starting with one and iterating over each row, pulling every single value one at a time so we can convert them 
one at a time. So what we need to do is add in a loop here in Power Automate Desktop to iterate over those values. So we can come in here, all the way at the top we have our loops. And in this case, we could just use a simple looping block. So we can take that block here, a block of actions, and now we need to choose how we wanna start this. We wanna choose in this case because it's not identifying that we have a table, it's not formatted a table either, but we wanna make sure we are starting in row two for column C, because that's the first value that we wanna loop through. So add that in here, start from two. And two, well in this case, we need to make sure we are stopping when all the values end. And this is where we can use that first free row variable that we have automatically produced. So we wanna end two right here, we can add in our variable, select a variable, and we wanna choose our first free row. Now we, can't, we don't wanna end on that empty cell, so what we actually need to do here is go to our first free row minus one. So take the, the first empty cell, go back one, so that would give us the last given value within our, our set of values for that specific column. And what we wanna do is increment by one here, okay? Now what you also notice is we get another flow variable that is produced for us called the loop index to let us know which actual uh, iteration we are working with in that specific loop. So let's go ahead and hit save there. So now we have our loop that's created, our block of actions for our loop. The next series of steps that we have, we wanna place inside of our loop so we can go over that table one row at a time. So now we can go ahead and, and read from that Excel table. We have the ability now to loop through or iterate over this column. So let's go ahead and add in the ability to read from Excel, starting with our first value there. So we're gonna come back to our Excel options here and we're gonna choose read from Excel worksheet and add that inside of our block there, our looping actions. And now what we want to do within our read from Excel and inside of the loop is say, okay, what are we looking to extract? So we're gonna start off with the Excel instance that we have open, that's automatically there for us. We are gonna use the value of a single cell, because remember we wanna do one cell at a time. The start column, we're gonna hard code that to C, because that is the column that we are using. And now the start row here, well this is where we need to make sure we're starting on the row for that specific loop. Remember, we just created the ability to find that loop, that specific indexing of that loop itself. So we can go to our variables here and choose the loop index variable. So that will go from one row to the next based upon which iteration number we have based in that side of that loop. So there's our start row. And then we will get for our flow variable here, Excel data. Now this is an okay name, but I would like to actually rename this. So I'm just gonna click inside of it and rename this from Excel data to our original amount. Okay, so that's the original amount that we want to convert in this case. Okay, so there it is, we can hit save. And now we have our original amount stored inside of a variable. So now that we have that stored, what we can do is go ahead and launch any browser of choice in order to go ahead and get to our converter. So in this case, we can go to our browser automation and choose, I'm gonna go ahead and choose launch new Chrome and add that in here right after we read from the Excel worksheet. And so I wanna launch a new instance Okay, or we could do attached to a running instance, but we would have to have that instance open each time. So if you just do a new instance, that's okay. It's just gonna open. We'll, we'll make sure we close this as well. The URL that we are gonna use is really any converting website that you find. I have one, wise.com, uh, currency converter there. So we'll go ahead and use that. And you can see how it opens up by itself. And then from there, we can go ahead and and go ahead and save this one. This one's pretty self-explanatory. What it does produce is a browser instance that we can have, okay? And then it'll close that specific browser instance as well. So we're gonna read from Excel, launch new Chrome, okay? And then once we launch that Chrome instance, what we wanna do is then write in our converted amount. 
So this is the web page that we are going to launch when we come in here. You can see here what we want to do is each time we read from that Excel worksheet, we want to add in our original amount here. And then we want to extract this converted amount. Okay, so we'll have our first variable we have here. We're going to go ahead and create another variable uh, at uh, here in a second here to extract that. But we need to make sure that we create the converted amount first. So we need to use inside, inside of our browser automation a way to form fill here. So we want to add that data here into the web. So let's go ahead and add that action here. And we're going to open up our web form filling. And we are going to choose to populate text field on web page. That allows us to take that field, add it into that web page itself to be able to utilize. And so what we need to point to is a specific area to add that field. So we want to come to our UI elements here, select our dropdown, and add a an UI element. This is going to allow us to essentially take a little bit of a screenshot here to capture that UI element to point to that location each and every time. So we'll add UI element. And what we get is this UI element picker. If you've ever worked with Power Automate Desktop before, this is very similar to that desktop recorder that we use. But this time, we just were pointing to one value only. If you hover over, you get that red rectangle. Hold down the control key and click right there. What that does is it takes that UI element for us. Okay, you could hover over on the UI element there to see the exact area. That is the amount that we want. So there's our little screenshot for it that's, that was captured for us. And now what we want to do is choose what to populate where we've just pointed to, that UI element. Well, we want to populate that original amount. We do have that now stored as a variable for us. So it's right here. There's our original amount. Now we can choose to use that variable here, populate that in our, our web page, hit save. And now we've gone and populated. The next step, all right, so now, if you think about this, we went, we've launched Excel. We've been uh, kind of uh, declared our borders, our boundaries of our table here. We've now created a loop to read from Excel, to open up Chrome, to populate that original amount into Chrome, then what do we want to do? Well, we need to extract the converted amount. So instead of our web form filling here inside of our browser automation, we're going to choose web data extraction. And now what we want to choose is to get details of an element on a web page. So a single value here. So we're going to now use this action and put that just right after we've chosen to populate the text field. And we're going to pretty much do the exact same step that we had before, but this time our UI element is just going to point to another location. So we're going to add a new UI element here. We still get our UI element picker, but now we're going to point to that converted amount. Hold down the control key, click, it'll capture that for us. And now we have that value that just been that attribute value. You can see even here inside of our variable that's produced. This is where, again, I'm going to go ahead and rename this new variable instead of attribute value. We'll go ahead and rename this to be our converted amount. Make sure we do have that um, variable icon there for us. And then let's go ahead and select save with our new converted amount. Hit save. Now that it is converted, we can go ahead and finally go ahead and write to Excel, right? We want to take this, all these amounts that we've now captured in our variables, go ahead and write into that Excel workbook there. So let's come back into our Excel options here and we're going to choose write to Excel worksheet right there. Add that in. Again, this is for each and every value. That's what we're doing inside of the loop. What these actions are going to do for every single one of that, those values do all of these. What is our value to write? Well, we want to write in to this Excel sheet here, the converted amount. Okay, so that is what we're going to choose here within our variables. There's our converted amount that we've just created. We want to write on a specific cell. Absolutely. Where do we want to put it? Which column? That's column D this time. 
And then which row are we putting it in? Well, it's the same here as we had earlier. We're going to do that on our loop index. We're going to read from that loop index, so that specific row. We're going to go back into that same row. So we're going to use that here within our variables and then hit select. So now we are able to write to the Excel worksheet. We can hit save. And then finally, because we are opening a new browser window each time we go through the loop, it is a good practice here to go to our um, browser automation. And let's go ahead and close the web browser, right? Open it, do what we need for it, and then close it. We don't want to have um, 10, 15, 20 browser windows open. So let's go ahead and close that inside the loop as well. And let's go ahead and close that specific browser instance that we had open, okay? Nice and simple there. So the last thing that we could do is because we're gonna have this gonna work for us is we would likely wanna come to Excel and close Excel, right? Have all of this work, add in close Excel. There is an option within our close Excel op action to save it as well. But for right now, let's go see if this works first and then we can add that in. Like sometimes I wanna just be able to see this before we go ahead and save and close. I'll close this first, close the one we had first. We'll save our flow and let's run it and let's see what we get here. All right, so let's go ahead and run and take a look at what we get for our results. So here you see, it's gonna start running. We're just waiting it there. It's, it's launching it. Chrome, there's Excel. It's gonna read from our first value, 524. There it is, that's exactly what we want. Close it, open up a new one, go to the next row, 7007. Add that in, grab the amount, write it in. What I love about Power Automate Desktop is it, it takes over. It gives you the feeling that's with RPA that it's taking over your machine. It's doing what you want it to do, but obviously much, much faster than you would do on your own. It's automating the process for us. And now we're just watching it do its thing. We're watching it work. And the goal here, it's gonna go through all of those 10 values. We're about halfway done right now. We wanna make sure it stops, right? We don't wanna make sure it keeps going after it finishes that last one, um, the value of 1776. Stop there, end the whole flow, don't go any further. That means we've done everything exactly what the way we intended. So we have one more value to write in. There it is, there's our last one. The flow is done and we are successful. The only other thing that we would do is we would want to automate the process of saving this Excel file and closing it. So here in our Excel actions, we have the option close Excel. This does both for us. So we add in close Excel. We can see that it is going to allow us to go ahead and point to that specific instance. And we can say to save the document right there. It gets us all that right there. We can go ahead and add that in, hit save. And now what we can do is go ahead and use this flow forevermore. Anytime we now have these mounts, as long as we point to that specific document, we can push play and let it do the work for us. Thanks for joining me here again as we look at using Power Automate Desktop to help automate any of those repetitive tasks that we may have. In this case, we took a, a, a journey into using Power Automate Desktop to convert these amounts, reading from Excel, going out to the web, going back into Excel, writing those values in, saving it, closing it, doing all of that for us automatically without us having to redo that manually ever again. Thanks again for joining me. Take a look at all of our future videos coming out, working with Power Automate, Power Automate Desktop, and everything else that we have for you working with Microsoft's Power Platform. Thanks again. See you next time.